Thank you for staying with us. This is Plus Politics. Now, a former military governor of Kaduna State, Colonel Abubakar Dangiwa Umar, retired. On Sunday, won the president, President Muhammad Buhari, over alleged lopsided appointments in the country. The former governor gave the warning in his open letter to Buhari and urging the president to emulate the administration of the late Prime Minister Abubakar Tafaba Lewa, Ulusha Gorbasanjo, military government, and the late Shehu Shagari in terms of appointment. And joining me still to have a discussion tonight around this is Mr. Deli Fawtimi, a legal practitioner, and Mr. Gbelo a political analyst, and also here Chuku Ibeji, communication expert. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying still with us on the segment. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity once again. Now, would Thank you have you. thought, would you have thought that you would hear a retired military governor from the North, especially, speaking out against the lopsided appointment? Mr. Gbaloba. Oh, Uma Dangiwa is a unique character from the North. We have to, we have to give that to him. In the days when fear could not let men of courage talk, in the days of Abacha, Omar Dangiwa was one who was very uh, affirmative about the fact that Abiola won the election and should be allowed to have his mandate. If a man could withstand the terror that the Abasha, that the Abasha administration unleashed against his citizenry and the open killings of people who had served in the military, especially when they were openly antagonistic, of Abacha uh, talking to Buhari, especially in an area of conviction where he believes that, the, that Buhari, President Buhari is dropping the ball, shouldn't be in the, indeed. President Buhari then retired General Buhari, rather served on the side of Abacha. And that was a government that was very unpopular. And, and it, was a, it was a government that was, you know, consistently eliminating and assassinating people. It was convenient for President Buhari to serve under Abacha. So uh, that uh, I am not one who is surprised that uh, Omar Dangiwa is displaying this form of heroism, especially against somebody that he knows. All right, thing. Mr. Fawtumi, on the matter of lopsided appointment raised by the retired military governor, why are we still at the point where it seems we need to state what would seem apparent to many? It is because we have a death. I lost you. I can hear you. I Go ahead. You. We can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay. I was explaining that it is because we have a lopsided dysfunctional state. In the first place, this is an elitist argument. The poor man on the street, the gentleman at Ojota that Mr. Gbadi alluded to earlier on, or Mr. Bola, I'm sorry, alluded to earlier on, it doesn't matter, it doesn't care who rules him as long as the person does right by him. But when you have a president who is unrepentantly redentist and completely narrow-minded, he cannot even see beyond the blinkers of his ethnicity and religion, and it comes out with everything he does. He can't help himself. His reflexes are completely, completely tribalistic in nature. Each and every one of his abilities, almost as if all you need to qualify for appointment is just, be, just come from his own part of the country. Ordinarily, everybody pretends to balance it. I'm saying this in order to answer your question, but I must let you understand that for, for the average person who is starving in Nigeria, the person who is being killed in the insurrections going on all over Nigeria, whether the person who is protecting him is Yoruba or Igbo or Ijo, it doesn't matter to him. These divisions, they were the ones who brought these divisions into our country. They, they enshrined all these quotas into this constitution that they claim that we drafted when we had no hand in drafting it. We the people, they say, and then the, we the people set up federal character and then decided that you have six zones and appointments should be kept in those places. But 
Nobody has been less respectful of the constitution of Nigeria since they pretended we had democracy 21 years ago than this dictator that currently sits as the democratic president of Nigeria. The constitution is clear. Let people come, let appointments be based, not even on merit. Is it too much to just follow the moribund constitution that they themselves put together? He says we have six zones. When you are making an appointment, make them on the basis of these zones. Okay. This president is tone deaf. He just doesn't appear to understand the need to balance a multi-ethnic society such as our home. You have security chiefs completely from one part of the country. The entire country is boiling, is always upside down. Even the optics of these appointments, they stink. For someone like Kangiwa to tell for Dangiwa to and Roma to talk, I'm not surprised. He's always spoken up in a nationalistic manner, but the oh, okay. question really is. Oh, I missed a foul to me. Now, here, yes. Chuku, in, in which yes. case, is an open letter the best forum to address such issues? Um, I, I, uh, thank you very much. Now, I, I may not have the, um, I may not have the, you know, the, the, but the ability to know the the person, the, the Ima Omar Dangwa, in, 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 so to speak, but um, in terms of historical impetus, but looking at him as a person and having read up on the kind of person he is, he's, he has a very nationalistic posture. I would I would not be very surprised if he had tried um, other means of reaching out to to Mr. President to, of course, to air his grievances. And look, that letter comes from a very, very, it has, it has a very, very nationalistic undertone. And it was straightforward, straight to the point. All right, it spoke to the mind of the man. As to look, if he has not been able to reach out to him or get to him in, through all the means possible or necessary, why not this, for this letter definitely provides a very good way of reaching out to him. And his points are straightforward and clear. Now, for you to be considered a leader who is fair and has equity and is balanced in your decisions. And just as when you were sworn in, you said you belong to everyone and you belong to no one, right? Then you should follow the letter of the constitution. You should follow a very norm at the minimum of representing or reflecting a, a representative across board of people who are on your on your on your appointment, your list of appointment. And guess what? The major, the major and the hierarchical top, uh, topmost uh, appointments are definitely, definitely um, slanted to one particular region. And that gives a lot of foul, foul, um, an odious uh, uh, slant to the whole thing. That's, that's my point. So, yeah, his letter, letter for me is very much in order. Letter is not in order. There's nothing wrong with him sending out that letter if he's not getting the right form of feedback or right uh, form of. Uh, a response from Mr. President. Now, Mr. Fawzumi, why do you think such a state of affairs has been left unchecked despite our national character ethos, which we hear about from time to time? <laughs> Did you just say national character? <laughs> Did you... Hold on, hold on, hold on. You didn't just say national character or ethics. <laughs> Is that just in letter? Is that just in letter? I mean, you, you laugh about it. Is it laughable? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I am very particular about pulling people up when they have been guilty of linguistic inexactitude. And that's what you just did. Nigeria is a state. Be careful to understand that. It is not a nation. Nations have citizens. States have members. Nigeria is a state. Please, is a state. So are, are, you, are, you saying we're, are you saying we're just, we're just a, a nation state? We are not a nation state, we are a state. Nations, when you speak of a nation, you are talking about a collection of people with a common destiny, common purpose, pursuing the same goals, having the same ambition, going in the same direction. We don't have leaders, we have rulers. They have made sure that they did not turn this into a nation because if we ever became a nation, we'll be asking questions of our rulers. So it's always important to keep us concentrated on this kind of discussions. Uh, they did not follow the quota system. Uh, there are too many abusers, too many full armies in the office. Of what use are those full armies in office? All the security chiefs are from the north. The northern part of Nigeria is one big war zone. What good have they ever done for the people that they are, they are using their quota to fill the offices? So please, we are not a nation. We are a state, a captured state.
ruled by people who have are, they do not have our interest at heart. Let's be clear about that. Then, then, in, in, in the light of that, yeah, in the light of that, Mr. Fowl, to me, what can be done then yes. to ensure that an ideology of one Nigeria becomes the default practice and not just a mandatory practice? Listen, when the Nigerian people come to the point where they understand that what is being passed off as a democracy is actually a feudal system that has overtaken the entire country, and the state is purposed solely for the enjoyment of the rulers without any care for the rule. 27 billion to repaint a building. How many schools have they built? And there is a recession coming. They cannot even think that they should cut the cost of government. The cost of governance is not being reduced, but the taxation on the people, the hardship on the people is being increased. What kind of nation is that? Everybody is looking yeah. to join those who are privileged. Yeah, let, let me bring you, Mr. Boloba. Mr. Boloba, I need your, your swift reaction to a few things uh, Mr. Fawotimi has said. Uh, not only Fawotimi. Let me start by saying that nobody can complain about the open letter of Uma Dangiwa now because when INEC declared President Muhammadu Buhari as the winner of his re-election and when Atiku was about going to, to court to litigate against that pronouncement, Dangiwa also wrote an open letter counseling, counseling Atiku not to do it because he felt that he could endanger, he could endanger the security of the nation. He counseled Atiku against that. So if they enjoyed the letter he wrote there, counseling Atiku not to litigate against the declaration of Wari's victory, they shouldn't be complaining now. And I like a particular word used, or a, a particular phrase used by uh, the, the banker, the ICT gentleman. Sorry, I don't know the the name of her now. I don't have the name of her now. He said that the most visible upper range appointments of President Buhari has been slanted in favor of a particular region of the country. You know what? After Umar Dangiwa letter was made public, you know what some APC chieftains did? They went and nano and Nano recorded all the appointments that Buhari's administration has made. And they said the southern part of Nigeria has yeah. actually had more appointments than the northern part. And, but that apart from that, Ogun State has been the state most favored with appointments rel relative to other states, and that only Kano follows after. But you know what? I so much like the phraseology used by my colleague that in terms of this in terms of important appointments nobody can fault the fact then that takes me to what the gentleman uh the barrister has Mr. stated well enough Mr. Fowl to me the truth is that we are like Chief Obafemi I once said we are not a nation we are just a group of disparate, disparate nationalities. And apart from that, the lack of leadership, this is not the first country on the face of the earth, to be conjoined together by disparate, in fact, that is why we ended up adopting federalism, constitutional federalism, as a form of governance by the founding fathers. But at this juncture, we are neither a nation nor a federal state. Everything, if, even if we allow the grace of the terminology of, or the phraseology of my colleague, a captured state, captured state, even if we allow that, that phraseology in the Technical governance architecture of this country, it is the most perverse 
governmental entity on the face of the earth. Perversion is written is written large in it because we pretend right, we, to we be need, a federation. We need to, we need, we need to speed we things up now, Mr. Wellover. As, so let me let me interject. As a there. command and co yeah. command and control military establishment. All right, we need to speed things up. We're, we're running out of time. I still have a couple of questions we need to address quickly. Here, 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 Chuku. Now, some yes. would say lopsided <clears throat> appointments hinge on other more foundational matters, which also are yeah. out of harmony. Would you agree? And what might this be? Um, look, a few times, a couple of times, um, we, uh, like, like, uh, like Mr. Bola has, has, has stated, I, I, I saw a report that stated that um, South South has a greater number of um, appointments, while the North, um, of course, um, has slightly below the South South. But you see, there's a strategic nature of this lopsidedness. And this strategic major behoves on the slant of a, the gravity of certain areas, like the security architectural areas, like those key areas that determine the economic base. Now, you will not see certain appointments on those strategic areas, right, that come best to that particular, that speaks to the lopsidedness. So what I'm trying to say is that why you see such, such, something like the service chiefs all from the, or mostly from the north, all right, you could possibly not see that the representative of that report comes that maybe the permanent secretaries or the directors are the ones in questions, or the assistant directors are the ones in questions who are being reflected as the South South. Now, I must state to you that in a country like Nigeria, what matters to the, the man on the street who, if he takes note, is the top spot, and if the top spot is slanted, it's lopsided because oh, it's representative. We're, we're really, of we're really out of time. Uh, we're really out of time. But I need your quick reaction now. Nigerians will want to know: Would you say that the five, the five years of Muhammadu Buhari uh, being in office as president has met the yearnings, the expectations, and changed promised Nigerians? Mr. Fausto, me, I'll go with you first. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ben. Let, let me just say this, Ben. I have no expectations of uh, General Buhari. I expected that he would fail. Not only did I expect that he would fail, I wrote that he would fail. I wrote it down. It's on record. Read my book. In Do Not Die in Their War, I said very clearly, I said that he is being carried on the wings of lies, of illusions. And that eventually everybody will wake up to realize that until the structure of the country itself changes, all the promised changes would be lies. Now, a man is telling you he wants to fight corruption, but he came to power corruptly. Everybody around him are the very same people, the people who are voting him, investing their hopes in him, are hoping he will fight for them. All right, Mr. Why would he do that? I, I'll need to cut you out there so, now. We're, we're, we're out of time. Yeah. Mr. Bolaba, quickly, in 30 seconds, would you say in the five years of the PMB administration, expectations of Nigerians and the promised change has any way been reflected? Quickly, sir. Yes, it has been reflected. It has been reflected in the area of the fact that even the pretensions that the previous administrations used to have about some degree of balance in appointment Buhari has decided to BS, to BS that, and he appoints as he likes. Look, the former, the former board, the immediate past board of the NMPC says it all for me. In that board, they had only, they had only three southerners among six northerners. And the chief of staff to the president, the alter ego of the president, also made himself a member. So, uh, yeah, there have been dramatic changes. Uh, one of the, one of the <laughs> changes could be so nauseating that, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's decided to rubbish the pretense to equity that, that used to prevail in appointments. And a, fellow, and a fellow, a retired officer, 
He's also telling him that historically he is the worst. Is the worst. All right, Mr. Bola, but we have to go now, yes, gentlemen. Like, it's been it's been point, such an interesting and engaging conversation. I wish we can go on and on, but we're out of time. I want to say thank you, Ami Echuku Ibeji, for joining us on the show tonight, and also to you, Mr. Bola. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Farrell to me. Thank you very much for your contribution on the show tonight. You take care of yourself, bro. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for the interesting conversation tonight. I'll give my take right after this break. And this is my take. Although the framers of the Nigeria's 1999 constitution had in a bid to prevent total dominance of one section of a country in government, imputed the principle of federal character as enshrined in section 14, subsection 3 of the Constitution to the effect that the composition of the government of the Federation or, or any of its agencies and the conduct of its affairs shall be in such a manner as to reflect the federal character of Nigeria and to command national loyalty by ensuring that there is no predominance of persons from one section or group. The government of President Muhammadu Buhari has continued to, as observable in various appointments, breach this constitutional provision to the disappointment of many Nigerians, even as protests by other sections of the country, particularly the South East and the South South. The Niger Delta, which have been the most neglected, have continued. Never statistically in the history of the country's democracy, even in the military era, has any president achieved such dominance of every sphere of governance by one ethno-religious group. It's BS stating that as it stands all key sectors of economy and security, the revenue-generating revenue agencies and the entire security architecture of the country are firmly in the hands of the region in a country of nearly 200 million people of diverse cultures, religions and ethnicities. Federal character provides for equitable distribution of appointment, but that has been disregarded by the current government. There is massive movement and agitation for restructuring. Buhari has been unfair to other sections of the country, which is dangerous for the unity and coexistence of the entire peoples of Nigeria. He has made us to see that Nigeria is really not one. And that's all on Plus Politics tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow, and you don't want to miss it. Until then, stay well and be safe.